And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at a game called Groundhog Day the Game. And... Hello? I'm, I'm trying to do a review. Now I gotta start the review over. I'll get it right next time. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassal, and we're taking a look at this dumb game, Groundhog Day, and we're gonna we're gonna go over this. And uh, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I don't even know why I want to be a reviewer. Howdy, fellows, folks, yokes, folks, folks. Hey, say it right. Got it. Let's try it again. I can do it. I've stopped caring. No. No, no, I will get it right this time. I can do it. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Groundhog Day, the game. This is based on the very, very popular, excellent comedy movie called Groundhog Day. That usually means the game is bad, of course, but it does not mean this one's bad. This is a cooperative game where you are trying to make Phil have the perfect day. Well, how does it work? Let me show you. In this game, you have a deck of cards that are numbered in five different colors from 1 to 12. Each of these has a selfish version, like Punch Ned. It has a wild version, Push Ned. It has the nice version, Talk with Ned Ryerson. The yellow version, Learning, Trying to Hug Ned. And then the perfect version, which is Buy Insurance from Ned. So each of these has a certain number of hearts at the bottom. You can see one through four. What you are trying to do to win the game is you need to play seven perfect cards in sequential order. Um, no, or numerical ascending order, not sequential order. However, here's the problem. You only have six of those perfect cards in your deck. The other six are here. How does the game play? Well, let's talk about that. Each round of the game, and you can start with fewer rounds if you want to play a harder game, but you're going to deal out this many cards from the deck. You'll shuffle the deck and deal this many cards out to all the players. doesn't matter if players have the same number of cards or not. Then you're going to start the timer. When everyone's ready, you're all going to touch the clock to show you're ready. You cannot communicate. You're going to start the timer. You then, before that time runs out, need to play seven cards sequentially. So you could start with the one, but you don't have to follow that. It just needs to be higher. So that someone could play a four, a five, a six, a seven, a nine, eleven. Good. We finish the day off. Now, the day is finished, and you're going to count how many hearts have been shown. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll search through your numbers over here, and you're going to put a 5 here to show that your score for that day is 5. Now, this is not a perfect day. To win, you need to play the perfect day. But you don't have to worry about that right now. All those cards are out of the deck. You're going to go to the next round and deal 22 cards. But here's the deal. Your next day has to be higher than the previous day. So you need more than a 5. So you're going to want to have a lower number because each day has to be higher than the day previous to that. Now, some cards on the learning days will unlock something. So this 12 card here, for example, unlocks Recite Poetry. So if I had played this one here, or in any day, then the number 8 will get thrown into the deck. And that is how you get your seventh card. And so that if at any point in time you can play seven cards, so four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, let's say they were all in the deck, then you win. Otherwise you're gonna lose. You'll lose if time runs out. You'll lose if you play a day that doesn't have more hearts than the previous day. Or you lose if you get to the end of the round. Or if for some reason you don't have enough red cards left in the deck to play. 
The art on the cards is not stills from the movie. It's drawn art, and it doesn't really depict the actors, but you know what? They did a good job at covering pretty much every major scene from the movie. At least they covered a lot of them, that's for sure. These numbers are fine. I wish there was maybe a better way to do it, but I get it. They're trying to do the clock. And then they got Phil, Punxsutawney Phil here. And the rules are very well done. And it has a nice picture in the back which shows you a full game where you play all the way up and it shows you how to do a good game. Their first score was 5-2. And there you have it. Good quality game for what it is, especially the mass market. So that's how the game works. Um, it is a mix of other games you may have heard of. There's a game called The Mind, where you're all trying to play cards in sequential order without knowing what other people are thinking, I mean, without talking, and you're just trying to read other people's minds. So this game has some obvious things. Play the cards. Play as low of a number as you can. You play them out. Now those cards are out of the deck. Play some more. Try to get those yellow cards out, but not too early because they're worth three hearts, but you want to get more red cards in the deck. Um, when I played this, the times we could have won, and note, could have, were always around the same time it shows in the back, like around seven, six or seventh round, because you may not draw enough red cards, so you need to get that deck out. Each turn you're putting out seven cards, seven cards, seven cards, but you need to keep making each deck higher. And then, of course, there's that annoying time limit. But even if you play without the time limit, even if you play with communication, there's a chance you'll lose. I don't think any group is going to win this the first time they play through it. And when you're done, you'll sit there and go, all right, I know we're not supposed to communicate, but let's talk before we start the game about how we want to do this. <laughs> I have yet to win this game. But it is an interesting game. I'm worried that it might be a little one note. But it is a fun game because the, the, the movie is that popular. And so for that purpose, I would recommend it because I think a lot of people will look at this as a game. It's, it's unlike anything people have played before for the most part. Sure, I can look at this game and I'll say, ooh, that's like the mind or the game or it's like this and that. But for most people who are going to go to the store and pull this off the shelf, they've never played anything like this. It's unique. It's interesting for them. And it has a theme. And the theme works. You get the day wrong, do it again. Get it wrong, do it again. I like it. This is the kind of game I like to see out on the shelves at mass market stores. So check it out. That's Groundhog Day the game. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to The Dice Tower. Today, have we done this before? No!